Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. It's the final game of the season, and it's our big chance for silverware. We didn't win the championship. We came in second, although we're still going to the Premier League. Who cares if you get a cupity cup 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 to celebrate it? But today we do have a chance in front of 80,000 people to stun the world and win the FA Cup, the second most important trophy in England? Probably? Yeah, we've got a chance. We're playing West Ham, who are not that much better than we are. They got here on penalties. They did beat Liverpool and Tottenham on the way to getting here, and we did not beat any any such competition. You can see that that's Slavin Bilic. He looks pretty good. He doesn't look as good as Mr. Managerino, though. Four goals in the last three games for John Green. We're starting John Green and John Green up top. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the John Green partnership in life and love never is broke. I'm going to solve a problem today from Ariel while I'm trying to win the FA Cup final. Uh, Ariel writes... Oh, by the way, thank you for donating to the Project for Awesome. Ariel writes, As a lifelong lover of fiction, I feel as if I have developed some unreasonable expectations about certain aspects of the human experience. In stories, there's such a sense of narrative structure, and experiences are heightened for maximum emotional punch. As a grown-up who's about to turn 30, I know by now that real life doesn't follow satisfying narrative arcs, and I'm not going to be, say, accepted to wizard school or go back in time to fall in love with a handsome Scottish Highlander. As it turns out, real life just seems to be a bit of a muddle with no guarantee of payoff at any point. I think I've made peace with this, but my problem is that in my day-to-day -day life, I still can't seem to avoid thinking about all the ways in which my experience is inadequate in comparison to the ones writers and artists have imagined for me. Any advice on how to focus on the best of reality instead? So I don't think that writers and artists have imagined those narrative arcs like for you or with the thought that you would have that narrative arc. They've imagined them for you really to give you like a gift of story, to like give you, you know, a lens through which you can view your experience and also like a window into other people's experiences. I am certainly not the first person to say that that uh, stories are both windows and mirrors but they are right like they're both a way toward empathy um, and in that sense they're a window um, and they are a way toward self-understanding and in that sense they're a mirror and so yeah like you're not going to go to wizard school um, and you're not going to go back in time and fall in love with the Scottish Highlander but like that's to me like that's not really what stories are trying to do get there John Green John Green shoot the ball shoot the mm. I, so I, I think like the first thing is to, it, it you know, and, and there is a sense in which like one of the things stories do for us is, is help us escape, right? Like they help us escape kind of, oh no, they help us escape the prison of ourselves. Um, and, and they give us, you know, like th they give us a break from the real world, which is valuable. And I think sometimes we, we don't value that enough. Like we talk about escapist fiction as if it's a bad thing. When really, it's quite a nice gift. Oh, John Green off the post. Unbelievable. I mean, off the post in the FA Cup final. Are you kidding me? That's a great start. That's a great start. We got to build on it, though. We can't get nervous like we got in our final game of the championship season. We've got to be focused, hardworking, and we've got to have we've got to have belief in each other and in ourselves. Um, that said, like, I do know I, I, I can really relate to the feeling of like, Wow, my life is not like a story. My life is convoluted and complicated, and there often isn't narrative payoff. And, um, you know, there's that old Chekhov line about how when there's a gun in Act 1, it better go off by Act 2 or whatever. I think I'm misquoting the line. But, you know, like in real life, all the time there are guns, both literal and metaphorical, that don't go off, hopefully. So, like, life isn't structured like a story. The ways that life is structured like a story are mostly constructed. Like, life is structured like a story in retrospect a lot of times because we are telling the stories of our lives to ourselves and to other people. 
But especially when you're in early adulthood, you don't, or I didn't at least, see my life that way because my life was something that, you know, I was in the middle of. And so there was no need yet to be able to construct a narrative that made sense. I do think, Ariel, down the road, you may find that, like, you look back and you're like, oh, this is a narrative that made sense. And, like, this happened and then this happened. And I'm glad that this happened so that that could happen and whatever, whatever. But, you know, I don't think... I don't think most people feel that way when they're 29 and God knows I didn't. Um, I, I think finding satisfaction within one's daily life, even though it doesn't work the way that a plot works is like one of the big challenges of, of being a person. It's also one of the reasons why, I try to write stories with plots that are a little messier than, um, you know, like well-plotted novels. Some people will say, well, John, you just write bad plots because you don't know how to write good ones. And that's not incorrect. But I also just think, like, that's my experience of the universe. Like, my experience of the universe is that it's poorly plotted. Uh, and so that is one of the reasons I write the way that I do. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't, I, I, you know, like I, I want people to, I don't want people to feel like their lives are miserable or a failure if, if everything doesn't click into place, um, you know, by the age of 17 or, 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 or via getting a ticket to wizard school. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with stories about wizard school. Those are my all-time favorite stories. So I, I, I don't have an easy solution for the problem of like, what I think this really boils down to is not that there's an issue with our stories, but there's an issue. Mm. Oh, we have an issue. That's for sure. We have a big, we have a class one issue and it's from Chicharito. Oh, he hugs his manager. Why doesn't anybody ever hug me? What's happened to the hugs for Mr. Managerino? I didn't even know that was an option. All right. Well, now we've got to score a goal so that we can hug Mr. Managerino. We got to really focus. We really almost made it to halftime at nil-nil. We've hit the post, and then it's just super frustrating to 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 give up a goal the way that we did. Oh, it's John Green. He's open. Go. What? What did you do? What happened? Did the ball go through the net? John Green never misses from there. Oh my God. Okay, Mr. Managerino, devastated, disappointed, and uh, I share that devastation and disappointment. So I think that's what's really going on, though, is that, like, what you're disappointed about is life. And the way to change that, I don't think, is to change stories. It's to change your life. And sometimes, like, that is about the way that we tell the story of ourselves to ourselves and to other people. But sometimes it's about, like, you know, like, we go through periods where uh, life just doesn't like isn't working i think everybody goes through periods where life just like isn't working for them um where like they can't find contentedness with the situation in which they find themselves and like that is challenging <laughs> like i don't i don't i i don't want to minimize how challenging that is um I, and I, I, I think it's one of the big reasons, like, we tell ourselves stories that don't necessarily hold up to scrutiny, like everything happens for a reason or, um, you know, uh, you, you need rain to see a rainbow or whatever. Like we 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 construct those. I think that we construct those stories because the truth. Did we give up a goal? Uh, no, I am going to take off Ben Woodburn. I'm also going to take a hard look at the rest of the squad. And is there anybody I can bring on who makes it more likely that I'm going to win the game? And I think in the short run, that answer is no. And so I'm going to leave it like this. But at some point, we are going to have to get a little more aggressive. So we're going to go attacking. Um, and... It's really hard to come back against Premier League opposition when you're 1-0 down. But John Green did have a great chance at the end of the first half, and that makes me think that there are possibilities out there for us. I just don't quite know how we're going to break down this West Ham defense because they seem pretty darn solid, 
And I and I and and like the pressing that I that 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 really is the reason we made it to the Premier League in the first place just has not been on display. And then there you see my substitute Dean Parrott with a horrible misplay of the ball, although a nice nice run back there, full credit for that. And then calmly gets the ball to Hodor, our cup keeper. And then now we're starting to move it around a little bit. So like when I play when I play FIFA, for instance, Ariel, I have to like make a story out of the story. Right, like uh, the story get it's John Green. Oh, it, what happened? What happened? It's a yellow card. What does that mean? For what? Can you tell me what happened instead of? Okay, so, oh, John Green is fouled. He's fouled, and then for some reason I don't get a free kick, <laughs> which fascinating. Turn to, oh, John Grenier had to turn the other way. He had to turn the other way. So, like, no matter what happens in this game, I'm going to have to create a narrative out of it, right? Like, I, in, in, instead of thinking about, like, life is both what happens to you and the stories you tell about it. That's, that's like, one of my, the, my foundational beliefs. Um, and you don't have a ton of control over either of those things. Um, and, like, they, it isn't fair. And, and it isn't, uh, you know, like... It, it isn't it isn't just the way that things work out isn't always the right way isn't always the fair way get there John Green oh boy but I'm gonna have to like I'm either gonna win this game or I'm not gonna win it increasingly it looks like I'm not gonna win it and if I don't win it I'm gonna have to like come up with a narrative for not winning it that makes sense I'm gonna go 4-3-3 um, I'm gonna change the formation to 4-3-3 is there a 4-3-3 absolute madness mode? Just 4-3-3 attack. That's what it is. 4-3-3 attack. And then I'm going to go over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Anoma in the central attacking midfield position. I'm going to put Solanke out there on the wing. And I'm going to bring in Vinny Thrill for George Frankum Frankenstein. And... That is my last roll of the proverbial dice. I think we need, we're in a desperate situation. We're going to bring on a third striker and we're going to see if, oh, for the love of God, that's not a foul. Now I'm frustrated. So I'm going to have to make a, I'm going to have to make a story that makes sense out of what happens right now. Um, and in order to do that, good job. Good job, Hodor. In order to do that, I'm going to have to think about what happened, but I'm also going to think about how I want to think about what happened. What kind of narrative do I want to make out of the events that did that happened? Oh, God, that's frustrating. Um, and so I'm going to be like, OK, well, we didn't win the FA Cup this year. All right. That's not great. I would have preferred to win the FA Cup this year. It's super frustrating. We hit the post in the first half. And now we're way overexposed at the back and likely to give up a second goal instead of scoring. But now we've got a chance and it's Vinny Thrill and it's Noma and it's John Green and and he's running out to the wing and he's getting tackled. And somehow it's not a foul. Uh, that was ridiculous. And so I'm going to have to make a story. And the story, if we lose, which with two minutes left, it appears likely we will, although I haven't given up. The story, if we lose, is, okay, we're going to win the FA Cup. We're going to fight to win the FA Cup next year. And that's going to be the story that I tell myself. And I'm going to create from that story a, a belief, a belief that next year we are going to compete for the FA Cup. And, and next year we're going to focus everything on winning that FA Cup. And then when we do win it next year, um, off the post, that's probably the end of the game, though. And then when we do win it next year, I'm going to be able to say, do you remember... When we lost to West Ham, one to nil in the FA Cup final, when we fought for so long to get to Wembley and then we lost the game. And I'm going to be able to say, well, this year we won it and it's going to matter so much more because we won it. And so that's how I create like stories in my life that make sense to me and that that I can use to have more of the life that I want and to and and just to get where I want to be in life. It doesn't always work but it works sometimes. That's the story that we're telling right now, Ariel, as we watch West Ham celebrate winning a trophy and we know that we came in second in the championship and second in the FA Cup and we feel 
obviously delighted to be in the Premier League, obviously delighted to make it to the final of the FA Cup, but look, it is not fun to watch other people arm in arm, to watch other people hug their manager when my manager goes unhugged time after time, to watch other people lift a trophy while we have to put on the runners-up medals and dry our tears, and it's embarrassing, and we know the television cameras are capturing us crying in disappointment while West Ham gets to celebrate. It's not fun, but we're going to use this memory. We're going to use this memory to make a bigger story, a story that's bigger than any story West Ham will ever be able to tell. And I'll see you next time for the beginning of that story. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.